So I just wanted to make a quick update. Um, I've got the uh, I've got the movement smoothed out decently, um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the I guess what what really what, what's driving the smooth motion because I've been experimenting with it. Um, there's I mean I I think the main factor to have this thing move uh, smoothly, you know, which which is pointed out in the gerbil documentation is to keep the buffer as full as possible while you intend to, to be jogging. And the, the gerbil planner, um, the gerbil, like let's say you want to move, you know, a one millimeter, or you queue up one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter. So let's say you have five millimeters in the queue. The gerbil planner will actually note that and it'll figure out the, how to set the acceleration based on the fact that it's planning to move five millimeters. The way the acceleration works is, you know, if you're only trying to move one millimeter, you have to you have to plan for the ramp to one to, to, to moving at your feed rate and then the ramp down to stopping from your feed rate. And so the more the more accurate the uh, the, the total number of moves are in the planning buffer, the more accurately the gerbil is going to be able to predict or, or, or model the acceleration and, uh, and that results in the smoother motion. Um, the other piece here is uh, if your feed rate is too slow or I'm sorry, well if your feed rate is too slow then you're going to queue up the buffer and then you're not going to on the tail end of the buffer with the larger feed rates uh, those won't actually get into the planning buffer so th nothing happens to them right and then you never get the acceleration um, or, or you move past the point that you want to go uh, and then you start to ramp up your acceleration so the, you know th that's that's one of the main factors in um, in getting the smooth jogging motion the other factor is, you know, you, you also want to make sure that you're sending the commands frequently enough, right? So you, you, you have to either uh, have this encoder on an interrupt, what, well, you probably already will have your encoder on the interrupt, but checking, like in this case, if you're check, if you're mapping to the velocity, you have to have some interval that you're that you're using to calculate the velocity, right? Because the velocity is, is 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 it has a time component. And so if you're checking your velocity every 100 milliseconds, you'll check your velocity, you'll issue the command. The command might actually be done if you're only moving a very short increment. And then there's nothing in Gerbil's planning buffer anymore, so you haven't, you haven't sent another command in there. Uh, and and that, will, that will result in a, in a jerky motion. And I've noticed that some of the senders, um, I think B, C, and C, uh, is the one I, I noticed the most. It's just not. It just doesn't seem to be sending the commands quickly enough to, to for the for the planning buffer to be able to you know use them in in a, in a way that makes sense. So anyway, so I have it. You know, it's quite a bit more smooth. Uh, again, one of the problems with this is it's 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 hard to spin this wheel at a constant rate, and because I'm not counting the number of ticks from from point A to point B as I move the wheel. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really just calculating how fast the wheel is moving. It's a, it's a little bit unnatural. And um, I'm starting to think that this may be not, you know, when you see those, those videos of those nice Haas machines and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're ripping through like super high feed rates and then, you know, they can stop on a dime. They're probably not just using velocity. Um, but I devised a little, just, just a little test here where you know I can just try to see how accurately I can I can nestle the edge of the the slide up to these points um, and part of the problem is the, I have a counterintuitive rotation on my uh, encoder here but um, I think this is a good little test to see you know how how accurate I can get you see I overshot it by quite a bit right there um, so it, you know I know my hands in the light of course because that's how that's how this stuff works but you know when you get up to speed 
there's a there's a delay and and so the other component here is the 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 jog cancel command and the latencies involved so um it doesn't seem to me like the jog cancel command is instantaneous um there is a bit of latency and there's a calculation that you can that you can do to try to figure out the latency i've tried to I've tried to map out the math in such a way where, you know, I can see the, the, the latency curve and theoretically, if I want to, if I want about a half a second latency, I should be able to have steps that are four millimeters, um, to get a decent latency, but I have half that my maximum step rate is actually two millimeters. And, uh, when I get up to a high RPM, you know, it, there, it's about, it's about a second of latency between when I stop the jog cancel command issues and the controller is actually able to um, get the uh, get the, the motor to stop. Now I've got I think I, I believe I have my acceleration set to 200 millimeters per second squ squared. I think that's what I have this set to. I could probably push it up. Um, I've just got this on my bench power supply right now, but I think if I, you know, maybe if I did 40 or 24 volts, this is running on 12 volts right now. Um, you know, I might be able to get better performance out of the motor and it might be able to, it might be able to stop a little bit more quickly with a, with a steeper acceleration setting. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that this is really super usable. Like if, if I'm, if I want to set up, it might be usable to set up like a, you know, if I want to, if I just want to get to about here because I want to do a probe, you know, it's that, it might be usable for that. Um, you know, is it more usable than just a regular old button press and, and kind of a, a rapid versus a medium versus a slow jog? It may not be, but um, anyway, I thought I would talk a little bit about it and show some of the tuning that I've done um, and then mention the components. Now the other components are, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm calculating a, a curve for the, 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 the steps. So I scale from point zero one steps to two steps and um, I'm actually using a, uh, a function to create a curve to do that. And so I'm, I'm cubing the velocity and then multiplying that by a constant and that that gives me you know that gives me a curve that i can that i can manipulate um the feed rates currently the way i have the feed rates set are um it's 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 linear and um i'm not sure how much that's impacting you know my ability to uh operate this kind of you know really accurately to be able to really accurately stop where I want. Um, I'm also not yet parsing out the buffer. I think that's the next thing I'm going to do is, is, uh, rewrite some of the data parsing code. Gerbil sends out a, uh, a status real time status update message. And I parse out, you know, the, if you look at the, um, if you look at the display here, um, that's uh, focus that's what I'm using to parse out the X, Y, and Z DRO positions. Um, and I can also parse out the, the, how full the buffer is. So I'm going to parse that out and, um, I'm going to rework the display because I'm not even, I may actually just use a larger display because it's hard to cram all the stuff into this little screen. Um, but that's what I'm going to be working on next is, uh, is the buffer parsing just to make sure that I'm not, I'm not filling the buffer so much that I can't issue the jog cancel command. Um, because obviously if you can't issue the jog cancel command, you can't clear the buffer out and you can't stop the, uh, the motor from moving. So that's it, I guess. If you have any questions or, uh, you're interested in the code that I'm using, it's actually on GitHub. I can share the link. Just leave a comment down below and, um, thanks for watching.